Hello everyone, Lisa's losing it. She really, really is now. She really is now, yes. So as you know, the month of September was uh, not kind to me in any way, shape or form. Um, but I made it to the surgery. We checked in at 1030. Um, they had Phil wait in the waiting room and they took me back to prep me for everything. Um, <laughs> here's a picture of my stylish getup. Yeah, I know. I know. Too sexy for words. I get it. Um, they had me put on compression socks. They had me put on what I refer to as the $16,000 hospital socks. There's a long story behind that one. Um, and the hospital gown. And then um, she asked me, she goes, have you gone through menopause? And I said, well, it depends on who you talk to. Um, because my previous doctor told me that the lack of menses means that um, I've gone through menopause. And I said, I know that's not correct, but, you know, try convincing her. Um, luckily, she's now tormenting people in Florida. Sorry, Florida. But um, she goes, that, that is so wrong. And I went, yeah, I know, but yeah. So I have no idea if I've actually gone through menopause. Um, but I'm 56, so I'm pretty sure. And she said, well, because you don't know for sure, she goes, we have to do a pregnancy test. Say what? <laughs> okay. Um, so they, you know, did the pregnancy test. They got my IVs all hooked up, um, asked me a bunch of questions, you know, just repetitive questions. And um, then they went and got Phil. And so then Phil sat in there with me until it was time to roll me back for surgery. Now, I am a 56-year-old woman who has never given birth um, by choice, Okay. And who has never spent the night in a hospital before. And um, I have an amazing brain who, for some reason, blocks out a whole bunch of stuff. So um, I'm like, Phil, you have to pay attention and let me know what's going on. It's okay. And wow, 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 wow. So, um, you know, we sat there for a little bit and then they came and got me. And um, I remember them taking me into the surgical room and I remember transferring over to the surgical table and I don't remember another thing after that until 6 p.m. Now the surgery only takes about an hour. Phil said that at one point they came out and said she's doing okay, she's in a lot of pain um, and we'll take you back as soon as we get a room for her. They didn't have a room for me? Say uh, whatever. So um, I remember that I kind of came to at six o'clock. I had no idea what time it was, but I came kind of came to and I said, you know, where's my husband? And they said, we're going to go get him for you. You know, we had to wait for a room. Okay, great. And then I said, what time is it? This is control freak Lisa. Okay. Um, because I knew that our dogs were home all day by themselves. We had somebody stopping in to put them out in the middle of the day. But if he wasn't going to be leaving by say three o'clock, we had to have them put out again. We had to have somebody put the chickens away. We had, you know, there was, there was other things to contend with. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, when I realized I looked, I remember looking up and seeing the wall and seeing it say six o'clock and started to come bolt upright in off the, off the bed saying, no, you have to get him in here now so he can leave. He has to leave. He's got, we have animals at home that need to be taken care of. Um, yeah, that's control freak Lisa. So, um, they did get him in there to see me. I do not remember talking to him, but I, I do remember it's to, to some extent saying you have to go home and get the animals. You know, um, he ended up not making it home till nine o'clock and the chickens were not put away and the dogs had not been let back out. Um, because there was a miscommunication. So yeah. Oh, well, um, you know, everyone survived all's well. Um, that is all that I remember of that night, quite literally. Um, they popped in on occasion with pain medication and to, I don't know. I honestly just don't know. 
but they, I know they came into the room a few times during the night. Um, and then at some point I woke up and, um, I remember talking to somebody. <laughs> I remember talking to somebody and, uh, cause I said, I need to let my husband know when to leave, you know? And so then I messaged him and I said, Hey, take your time because they still have to do the CT scan and whatever. I don't remember going for that. Um, I have, I think I would have been great at childbirth. I wouldn't have remembered a thing, but, um, yeah, I didn't remember anything. So, um, I do remember, um, that they, you know, when he got there, he came up and we got my stuff together and, uh, you know, everything was fine and they wheeled me out and I was in moderate discomfort. Um, but I had just been recently given a shot of some kind, you know, through the IV with painkiller. Okay, great. So then we, um, we take the two hour drive home and by then they were supposed to call in the prescriptions to the pharmacy in our hometown and, uh, we would pick them up on our way here. Okay, great. So he brought the pillow for me because they said to, you know, hold a pillow up against your stomach, you know, and, and that will help with any discomfort, um, from jostling in the car or coughing or anything like that. Okay, great. Again, I don't really remember the drive home. I remember sitting in the parking lot at the pharmacy and he went in and got all the prescriptions. And I mean, I'm telling you, there were a ton. Um, and we got home and, I, and so I got the book, you know, my, my book that they gave me that's supposed to have everything you need, that they're so proud of this book. Um, and in the book, it says that they give you a three day supply of a, uh, an op opioid painkiller, you know, a pretty significant painkiller. I am blissfully ignorant about drugs completely. I, I know nothing and I don't need to. Okay. But apparently I do. Um, so when we went through that, I compared the book to what we actually got from the pharmacy. I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. I mean, seriously, these are still sitting here. Um, dissolve one tablet on the day, every six hours. I never even opened them. Um, apply this patch behind your ear. I think this is for um, nausea, and this one might be also. Anyway, um, never even opened them. They're still, they're just sitting here. Um, liquid Tylenol and uh, 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 syrup to drink uh, to prevent GERD, which is like an acid reflux thing. Okay. Um, and yeah, just, you know, all the stuff. And I went through the, the whole bag of medications and I said, Phil, there's no oxycodone in here. He says, what? Now, mind you, the man has been on the road for two days straight. They're back, they're back, right? And having to pick up the slack for everything, you know, that I can't do. And just his general Philness, you know, worrying about his wife. And <laughs> he had to go back into town. We called and said, you seem to have forgotten a prescription. Oh my gosh, we're so sorry. 12 miles there, 12 miles back. Okay, small town living, gotta love it. So he went and got it, brought it back home. Okay, um, took the painkiller, drank some liquid Tylenol, um, and then said, I I'm, I'm done. I, I just need to be done, you know? And so I laid down and I tried to sleep and I tried and I tried and I could not get comfortable. The incision, the big incision, the one where they pulled my stomach out of, um, that, uh, was really kind of, it was, it was hurting. It was just hurting. And the muscle kind of behind it was hurting. <clears throat> Come to find it, find out yesterday, I found out that that, that spot is where they injected blood thinner when they did the surgery. Okay. Um, but couldn't get comfortable. Now that's Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. Um, I wake up Saturday morning and I have no more oxycodone. I should have had a full three day supply. I didn't have any and I was hurting a lot. And so they say to call them, they have an on-call service, you know, call them, uh, before you call the ER or anybody, you know, anybody else. And so I did. And so then their phone service connected me actually directly with the surgeon. And uh, I said, this is what's going on. I said, my prescription says to take two every six hours for pain, which is what I've done. I said, but I only had a day and a half worth of pills. And he said, Lisa, the prescription is for one every six hours. And I said, I'm looking at the bottle 
and the paperwork that came with it, and they both say two. Um, I am happy to announce now that that pharmacist is no longer employed um, at our local pharmacy um, because she totally screwed that up, totally screwed that up. I'm like, okay, I, you know, it's Northern Michigan. I don't know what to tell you. We have the worst health care in the world. Um, what can I do about this? He goes, I can't prescribe you anymore. He goes, so what I need you to do is to take the liquid Tylenol every four hours, whether you feel like you need it or not. He goes, and that will close the pain gate and it'll make it better. Okay, thank you very much. So then Phil took the bottle and the paperwork up to the pharmacy, talked to the pharmacy manager, talked to the store manager, um, and... Yeah, I, I honestly think they were a little afraid that we were going to sue them. Um, I'm not interested in suing them. I survived it, but I was a little shocked. I just can't believe that uh, doubling the dosage uh, could have caused um, an overdose. But that's what the pharmacist manager you know, said. I'm like, okay, I'm alive. We'll, we'll, we'll get over this. I don't have the energy right now to deal with this. Um, so the pain was not going away. Now I was checking in on TikTok. Okay. And I got some really great comments from the bariatric community on there. And quite a few people said you needed to get a belly band. And so in the middle of the night on Sunday, because I'm not sleeping and because I'm not sleeping, Phil's not sleeping. Okay. And if you're not following me on TikTok, if you have, you've heard this and I, I'm sorry, but, um, I think it was Saturday Saturday night was so bad. I mean, just so horrifically bad. I woke up laying on my stomach and I was, I was laying to the side where that major incision is. And, um, I could not get purchase to move off the bed, uh, without a lot of pain. And then I would start coughing, which would cause me pain. And then I would try to get purchase again and start coughing again. And it was a repetitive cycle for what felt like forever. Now for somebody who literally lost 24 hours plus of her life, um, I have no idea how long that went on, but it went on long enough, you know? Um, so that when I finally did get purchased to sit up, I was literally pouring buckets of sweat and snot and I was a mess and breathing heavy. And I woke Phil up and he's like, are you okay? I said, I, no, but I, you know, I'll be fine. And he's like, do you need help? I said, no, please, God, don't help me because if you help me, you'll hurt me and it'll only be worse. So please don't help me. Um, that's me. It drives him crazy, but that's me. So I did not want to go through that again. Um, I had arranged for a Walmart, Walmart pickup order, but I did it from my phone and somehow accidentally got it from the big town, you know, an hour, an hour, uh, uh, north of us. And so um, he got up uh, the next morning to go pick up the Walmart order. And I mentioned the belly band to him. I said, I don't even know where you would find one of these short of Amazon, but I feel like if I don't get one, I'm not going to be good, you know, and Amazon's not going to get it here tomorrow. That's not the way it works out here. Um, so he stopped at Dunham's Sporting Goods. <laughs> okay. I give him, I give him huge kudos for, for creative thinking. Um, and he got me uh, a belly band and it, it is what it says. It's a, it's a Velcro elasticized band that it does not feel tight. You know, you kind of wear it like you would a corset. Um, it does not feel tight. Um, and it's not so restrictive, but it restrains it enough so that there's not excess movement. Now, <laughs> um, when he came home, we put, you know, we put that on and I mean, I'm wearing like a, a, a night dress and a tank top, you know, he puts it on over those and I'm like, I'm staying in these clothes. I'm not getting out of these clothes. We're good. And, uh, that night I managed to get some sleep, you know, not a lot, but a little, um, I was having an issue where I was coughing. Um, something was causing me to be very phlegmy. And so I would wake up coughing, which again hurts and, you know, it's a whole repetitive thing. So after three days, him getting no sleep, me getting no sleep, me on the verge of tears all the time, um, I finally said, that's it. Now for a number of years, I have taken two Tylenol PMs, uh, the off brand, um, at night. And that lets me shut down my mind enough to go to sleep, you know, 
And uh, I said, I'm going to uh, make an executive decision and I'm going to take these. Uh, I'm allowed to take Tylenol. I'm allowed to take Benadryl. It's basically what that is. And so I'm going to take these and I'm going to get some sleep. It was the first good night's sleep that I'd had since surgery. And that was Monday night. I got sleep. He got sleep. I remember waking up in the morning on my back and thinking, oh my gosh, I am not in screaming pain. Thank you. Thank you, universe, because wow. Um, so I'm now taking those again every night because I need sleep. I am a hot mess when I don't get sleep. What I did not know is that um, apparently um, anesthesia can make you very emotional for a little while afterwards. So um, this hardened, cranky old lady, okay, is crying at news stories and crying about, you know, I was trying to figure out, uh, you know, what to do for myself for a uh, uh, congratulations kind of thing, you know. And um, there's been a tattoo that I've been thinking about getting. And I, when I explained it to Phil with the, what it meant, you know, I started crying. I'm like, okay, that's it. Obviously, I'm just losing my mind. I can't take this anymore. I talked to my sister a couple days ago and she, she goes, anesthesia, Lisa, it makes you emotional. It makes you very emotional. I'm like, nobody tells a person this. Everybody just assumes that everybody has had a life by the time of 56 that involved a heck of a lot of doctors or surgery or childbirth or something. I don't know. I am the anomaly. And so I get shortchanged on all of the necessary information as far as I'm concerned. Everything is a mystery and a surprise and I'm kind of over it. Um, but we made it through. On um, Tuesday, I made the executive decision to literally take the day off. Um, I wasn't trying to do anything. I couldn't do anything. And so I was just going to sit there and knit and just enjoy focusing on feeding myself on the schedule that I had, you know, and learning how my body acts with all of this new stuff. That's okay. We did that. And then yesterday was Wednesday and yesterday we got in the car at 1030 and we went downstate. Um, I wanted to stop at Sam's Club because they've got these amazing totes that are very secure. Um, and so that's what we're organizing the garage and the breezeway and everything with. And I wanted to go get more of them because you can't have them shipped with the Plus membership. And uh, Phil likes this uh, sugar-free lemonade they have, and you don't need to know all this. But I also uh, really wanted to pick up 10 of their rotisserie chickens because they're $5 chickens. It has nothing to do with Lisa's losing it, but with my other channel. Um, and so they didn't have any rotisserie chickens. Um, and I said, you know, I think I'm going to try to walk the store. So uh, I walked into the store, waited for him to park the car. And by the time he got in there, I said, you know, I think I'm going to drive the go-kart. Um, so I drove the go-kart around the store. I'm not a fan. I actually at one point turned and apologized to one woman that was coming out of the aisle. I said, I'm sorry, I'm just learning how to drive. And she giggled at me, you know. I'm like, okay, so let's do this. Uh, so we got everything, you know, almost that we had planned on getting from there. And then we went to the doctors for my one-week post-op checkup. This is kind of a crash course and whew, okay. Um, they wanted to see my stitches. Um, you know, they said, is it, do you have, before anything went on, you know, it was, it was a, at, at best I'm thinking an LPN. Oops. Hang on. Multitasking. Not my thing. Not lately. Um, where did I leave off? Okay. So, um, I always take Phil with me because he catches things that I don't, you know, so it was with the dietitian and at best I'm thinking an LPN. Uh, and she, <laughs> We went in, we sat down, you know, in a, it's like a little office room. And uh, they said, first, you know, is there anything that, you know, you have any concerns or questions about? I said, I'm concerned that nobody told, told me about a belly band. And that I had to find out on the internet that this is something that would be extremely beneficial. Um, and honestly, if I had to say anything about this program, we don't get enough information about that kind of stuff that would be extremely beneficial. Well, we're, we're considering, um, you know, making that, uh, a suggestion. I said, I really seriously think you should, because I went through unnecessary pain due to the lack of this knowledge. Well, you know, well, we're just, thank you. We'll just get that. Shut me down hard. I'm like, I'm just going to be nice for this meeting. I'm, I'm, 
I'm just over it. So, okay, great. Uh, well, little LPN gal says, well, you know, um, I would like to take a look at your incisions. I said, okay, fine. I said, but you're going to have to give me a minute because I have to get this band off. So I said, Phil, you know, help me get the band off. Now I had on sweatpants and, uh, I was so stoked about going to Sam's Club and wearing sweatpants, but, um, I had sweatpants and I had on, um, a tank top and then the belly band over that and then a hoodie because I knew the hoodie would majoritively hide the fact that I wasn't wearing a bra because one of the incisions is high up and in the middle there where I feel like a bra would interfere with it. So I've been staying away from them. Um, and probably will for, you know, probably four weeks anyway. So, um, you know, got all rearranged, exposed my belly <coughs> and she said, okay, you know, it looks good. She goes, that bruise is because that's where they, they, inserted the blood thinner and I went, well, that's interesting. Okay. And then put myself back together again and sat down and, uh, started talking about, you know, other things that were going on. Uh, they asked me, you know, she said, I, you're probably not meeting your protein goals. I said, no, actually I'm exceeding my protein goals. I'm concerned about what my carb goals should be. And she said, at this stage, she goes, that should not be a concern. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, I, I went through, because I, I have a little app on my phone. I'll put a link to it down below. Um, that That's where I track what I eat and the water that I intake and my weight, it, everything. Absolutely everything. Um, and so I said, you know, I had this much protein and that many carbs that day, that much protein, that many carbs that day. You know, kept doing the whole to do all the way through to the current day. It's only been a week, you know. Um, and she said, okay. She goes, if you want, she goes, you can actually, because the, they give you a meal plan kind of suggestion, you know, and then you can rearrange a few things here and there. But in their meal plan, it has three protein shakes. Now, I will tell you, if you're considering having the surgery, probably the best advice that I've heard um, anybody say, and that's something that I, I considered repeating because it's just a way of life for me. If you know me, um, I'm a preparedness freak. And so I wanted to make sure I had everything that I needed before the surgery, which is why I'm ticked about the belly band. Um, but I took every single suggestion to heart when I heard, um, somebody that I was following mention it, you know, what are the five things that you wish you'd known before, you know, and nobody said belly band. Um, so I'm telling you belly band. But uh, I stocked up. I started buying protein 2O. I started buying protein shakes, you know, and they, I've, I've been cautioned a couple of times now saying that after the surgery, your taste buds will change. And so I can say that the Premier One Protein Strawberry Banana Shake, I have no taste for anymore at all. I didn't mind it before. It wasn't a favorite. I didn't mind it before. Now I really don't like it. Um, but luckily there's less than half a case of it left. Um, I kind of stuck with true and steady. Let's just go chocolate. Okay. Because who doesn't like chocolate? Um, so I stocked up on premier protein. I stocked up on, um, the members mark version of premier protein. I got the fair life, uh, you know, shakes, the chocolate ones. I haven't been able to find any other ones. And, um, I just recently got, uh, the core power from fair life, which has 42 grams of protein per shake instead of 11 and a half ounces it's 15 ounces. It's very good. And it's got like, uh, 50% more protein than just a regular fair life. So I'm like, okay. Cause I know protein is important cause I don't want to lose this stuff right here. Um, if at all possible. Well, <laughs> um, if, if you're, just starting your journey with this, don't go hog wild, but stock up on some of it because the stuff's not cheap. It's really not, but to have it available is a great thing to do. And then as you get closer, your doctor will give you sample menus and that kind of thing. And I did not go hog wild. Um, but I have since put in two Walmart orders, um, because one of the thing was instant mashed potatoes but you can't really add anything to them, but you can, I, I could have instant mashed potatoes that had flavors, just no pieces. You know what I mean? Um, so Idahoan is like the only instant mashed potato you can find right now. 
um, and they've got flavors. And so I did the four cheese and I'm telling you, those are probably the best mashed potatoes I've ever eaten in my life. And they were watered down and it was a half a cup. Okay. But, mm, okay. I was just so happy to get something besides chocolate in my mouth. I have said my entire life, if you took away chocolate tomorrow, I wouldn't even raise an eyebrow. If you tried to take away my potatoes and my bread, I'm going to take you down. Well, come to find out potatoes and bread are an issue. Um, and bread is going to be a continued issue for a little bit, but uh, I don't care that much about chocolate. So I'm being oversweetened, seriously, uh, just really oversweetened with the, the options that I have. Um, but I, you know, figured all that out. She suggested, I digress, she suggested that I cut back on one of the protein shakes. Instead of three a day, go down to two. And instead of the protein shake, have another one of the options that I can have um, from my liquid diet. Now, the liquid diet portion is for two weeks after the surgery. So I'm eating this way until October 5th. And then I go up to a pureed diet, which is pureed, but not pureed. Uh, we'll go through it. But um, so I can have instant mashed potatoes. I can have low-fat cottage cheese. I can have sugar-free pudding. I can have, um, you know, there, there's a few different things. I can have split pea soup as long as it's, you know, beaten up. There's, there's no solids in there at all. Um, now all of those things are carby. All the things I just mentioned are carby. So I'm like, okay, I can even have instant oatmeal, sugar-free, um, instant oatmeal or low sugar instant oatmeal. So I got it. Um, and it has the maple and brown sugar flavor, right? It has the variety, but the maple and brown sugar flavor one I did, and it just ha has to be more watery than you would normally have your oatmeal. At least normally I, I like thick oatmeal. So, um, and that was like, oh my gosh. And I'm being very careful in chewing oatmeal. I don't think I've ever chewed oatmeal in my life. <laughs> um, but those are, the, you know, those are all the fun things that I'm, I'm going through and experiencing right now. Um, so uh, today is the first day where instead of a shake for breakfast, I had a little bit of oatmeal. And here any minute now, I'm going to have a little bit of cottage cheese. And uh, at dinner, you know, and then I'm going to have a shake. And then at dinner, I'm going to have a shake. And a little bit after that, I'm going to have um, some instant mashed potatoes. And that will level out my protein to not as high as I was getting. I mean, I was getting over 100 grams of protein. And they're assuming that it's difficult to get in, you know, 60. Not if you're drinking those shakes, which make it extremely convenient, albeit not entirely satisfying. But honestly, for the first few weeks... You're worried about messing up your stomach. I mean, my stomach went from my stomach to, you know, my stomach. And so I'm being very careful about how much I put in there. I'm eating it very slow. Um, I'm, I'm even chewing cottage cheese. Again, not something I've ever done, you know. Um, but I'm doing it very slowly so that I can figure out when I'm full. What I have discovered, there are tells for some people. Uh, when you reach full, uh, you will you can start hiccuping, uh, which I've done, or um, your nose will start running, which I've done. And I'm like, okay, so I guess, I guess I'm really full, and I need to learn to put that spoon down. That is going to be the challenge moving forward, um, is to realize that you cannot take one more spoonful. You really can't. And so sometimes that half a cup of oatmeal is not. Uh, it's it's not. It's too much, is what I'm trying to say. It's too much. And so you don't need to finish that last spoonful or two. Um, the dogs have been very happy making that up for me. I am looking forward to the next stage where I get to add a little different foods to my diet. Um, but I'll get there when I get there, October 5th. And until then, I'm just making do, doing what I am. Um, she did mention, it was funny. I said, do you remember we had a conversation? Because beef, remember I said it's going to be like six months? Well, apparently the reason that it's six months before I can touch beef is because it's very dry most of the time. And so it makes it very difficult and very fibrous for your new little stomach to, you know, break down. And I told her, I said, you remember I told you I canned a lot of my food? She goes, yeah. And uh, I said, okay, I can roast. I said, and this is the most tender, delicious, juicy roast. Like it sat in a crock pot for 12 hours and you can just peel it apart with a fork. I mean you can't break up tuna fish as easy as you can break up this roast, you know? And I said, is that an option? She goes, if you can tolerate it when you get to that stage, yes, it's an option. I said, okay. 
So I'm going to be able to finesse this a little bit for me, um, but I'm going to have to wait to see how my stomach handles it. The next stage, I'm so excited. Um, the next stage, I'll be able to have eggs. And that means I can break up a hard-boiled egg. I can fry an egg. I can have a poached egg. I have no purpose for a runny egg unless I have toast. And toast is not an option. So um, I'm going to be making little egg salads, you know, and having those. Because I just, I want an egg. That's all there is to it. But she did mention that a lot of people have uh, trouble handling eggs when they're reintroduced to the diet. I'm like... I have 50 chickens. <laughs> I better be able to eat eggs. This is just not right. Um, so we'll see when I get there. But um, that's kind of my all-in-one catch-up. You know, I'm I'm doing my do. I'm being careful. I'm going slow. Um, this was a rough month for me to get through, uh, but I made it. Today is the 29th. I am eight days post-op, and uh, it's all going to be great from here. I am looking forward to being able to exercise. Um, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, I've lost 16 pounds. So what um, I want to be, I can't lift anything more than 10 pounds for four weeks after the surgery. So once I'm cleared for that, then I will um, start doing little things and hopefully supernatural within six weeks. But this, I, 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 yeah, you know what I mean. But at the end of the day, if that's the worst thing that happens to me, I am golden and I am happy and I'm recovering nicely and I appreciate all of the wonderful kind thoughts and emails and cards and everything else. You guys are fantastic. Um, I am looking forward to this journey even more now that I'm in it. Um, we've had some bumpy patches, but it'll all be great. And uh, that's it for now. So take a look at what's coming up next. It's kind of my little picture sum up uh, and we will catch up with you next week.